over there in Isaiah 58, the three, third through the sixth verse says how to set the proper way for fasting. Be sure that you're fasting for the right reason. And that you're not just going through the rituals and the motion. Let's turn over there to Isaiah 58. And you'll see what I'm talking about. Isaiah 58 ask, starts out by asking a question. And the question it asks is, it says, Wherefore have we fasted? Says they, that thou seest not. Wherefore have we afflicted our soul? And thou have thou, thou takest no knowledge. Behold, in the day of your fast you find pleasure. And exact all your labors. Behold, you, fight, you fast for strife and debate. Some folks fast so that they can get all of this information and power so they can be able to tell you what they know. Tell you how much they know over what you don't know. That's the wrong reason to fast. Amen. Behold, in the day you fast, it said, but behold, you fast for strife and debate to smite with the fist of wickedness. And then it goes on to say, ye shall not fast as you do this day, to make your voice to be heard on high. Then he asked the question, say, is it such a fast that I've chosen for a man to afflict his soul, to bow down his head as a bulrush, to, to spread cyclos and ashes under him? Would I call this a fast an acceptable day of the Lord? Then the sixth verse gives us an answer. Is not this the fast I have chosen to loose the bands of wickedness? That's the first type of fast that we should be looking for. It says to undo the heavy burden and to let the oppressed go free and that ye break every yoke. Amen. That's the type of fast that we want. Some of us, we get through fast and we, we ain't no further down the road than when we didn't fast. But when you get through fasting, you ought to be able to pray for somebody. Amen. And that yokes ought to be broken. Yes. When you get through fasting, the, the heavy burden ought to be lifted up off you. When you get through fasting, there ought to be a, 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 a bond that used to you hold with the wrong thing. It ought to be broken. Yes. Because that's what it's supposed to do. Lift up the hung down head. Let the oppressed go free. And that you break every yoke. See, some of this stuff ain't going to be, you know, you got folks that the only way that they can get rid of some of this mess, they got to fast and pray. Hallelujah. Yeah. Come on, Praying is another tool that is equally important as fasting. And they go together. One should not fast without praying. Amen. Nor should you pray without fasting. Sometimes you have to empty out your soul. When you empty out your soul when fasting, then you fill your heart with prayer. Because after you empty yourself, then you need to put some good stuff in there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. After your, your belly get empty, then you want to put some good food in it, right? Hallelujah. Now, you know it would be real bad to, uh, if you, you're hungry and you go and eat something that tastes disgusting, that you don't even have a desire for, that don't even, uh, uh, that don't, don't, don't have, you don't even have any craving for. And then all of a sudden you say, well, why did I eat that? It, it served no purpose for them because I was empty and now I done put all this mess in me that I don't even want. Well, that's the same way with your spirit. If your spirit, you done emptied out your spirit through fasting, why would you then sit down in front of the TV and put everything back on the inside of you that's not like God? So why are you fasting? Put on TBN. Why are you fasting? Put on the word network. Why are you fasting? Listen to gospel music. Why are you fasting? Read your Bible because now you're filling yourself back up with good stuff. And guess what? After a while, you'll be able to start quoting some scriptures that mean something. Oh, bless the Lord with me. Let us magnify his name together. The humble shall hear thereof and be glad. Bless the Lord over my soul and all that within me. Bless his holy name. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good and his mercy. See, that's when you start filling yourself up with all of that good stuff. When you fast, that's, that's what you want to do. Prayer is a sincere petition to God from the heart. Faith carries the petition to the throne. So when you pray, back it with faith. 
Don't just have a bunch of vain words. Get down there and say, uh, Our Father. Our Father. Our Father. Our Heavenly Father. Now you done said, <laughs> you need to go on now because you done said Our Father. He know he's the Father. You done said it about four, four times now. And the Lord said, okay, I hear you. What do you want? Hallelujah. <laughs> you still saying, our Father. Uh, our most gracious Father. Mm -hmm. Praise the Lord. And the Lord said, well, the Lord said, well, okay, when you get through calling my name now, I know the Lord laughing at us sometimes. He be, he be like, be sitting there, the Lord said, nah, what's this? I think the Lord be reading a book on us sometimes. He's like, when they finally get through, I'll be right here with them. And we go through all these old jaw-breaking prayers and long swelling words and all that. And Lord said, don't, I don't need all that. Just, just get to the point. Lord, I'm down here in this flesh. Lord, I'm, I need your help right now. I've been having some struggles in my my mind have been perplexed. My soul have been overwhelmed. Lord, come and help me right now. The Lord said, that's what I'm talking about. Amen. That's what I'm talking about. All right. You need my help. Here I come. And the Lord comes and aids you. The Lord. So whatever you want from the Lord, make sure it's a sincere. And then it's back by faith. Amen. Then pray uh, without distraction. Some of us trying to pray and and we're ironing and well you can pray while you're ironing but watching this and calling on the telephone and hollering out the window and 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 trying to play with the kids and you know all of that you you got to go into your closet amen, amen. amen. not your if it is your house closet, go into your house closet Hallelujah. and shut the door and tell all the kids, y'all go outside. Amen. I got to talk with the Lord a little while. Go on down to the playground. The songwriter picked up a pen and said, now let us have a little talk with Jesus. Tell him all about our struggle. He will hear your fainting cry and he'll answer by and by. Just a little prayer will turn and I can feel the fire burning. Now let us have a little talk with Jesus. He'll make it all right. So that's what you got to do. You got to get in a in a mode, in a setting, in a zone. You know, the world say, I'm in my zone. Well, when you start talking to Jesus, you ought to be in your zone. Amen. And you know what? This ain't, this ain't something that you got to make up. This is something you ought to be able to talk to him. Just like you're talking to a friend. Yes. You know, you don't have to go. With friends, you don't have to call them by their surname. You know, I don't have to call Mother McClemmy, Mother McClemmy, because she's my friend. Amen. When we're riding along in the car, we dismiss with Mother McClemmy. And I said, Diana. And she says, Anthony. That's what she does. She said, Anthony, what are we going to do today? We're going here or there. And I said, Diana, I don't know. I dismiss with the surnames until I come in front of y'all. Then I say, Mother McClemmy. Amen. And then she said, Bishop Bowman. But when I'm talking to God, I talk to him just like I'm talking to a friend. Amen. Because he's my friend. Yes. And I can talk to my friend like that. Hallelujah. The songwriter said, what a friend we have in Jesus. All of our sins and griefs are bad. What a privilege it is to carry everything to God in prayer. Oh, what peace we often forfeit. Oh, what needless pains we bear. All because we do not carry everything to God in prayer. But the second verse is what I really like. Have we trials and temptation? Is there trouble anywhere? We should never be discouraged. Take it to the Lord in prayer. Oh, yes. Oh, yes. Sometimes, way up in the midnight hour, we can call on the name of the Lord. Sometimes when, 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 when our mind is disturbed, you know, some things you just can't sleep on. You got to get up out of your bed and begin to talk to the Lord. Uh, sometimes your, your mind will get so disturbed that it'll wake you up out of your sleep. Oh uh, yeah, you can't just sleep when your mind is troubled. It'll wake you up. But if you call on the name of the Lord, way well over in the midnight hour, I had to call on it. Because some things were just too heavy for 
me. And I had to say, Lord, I need your help right now. Oh, yeah, the perplexities of life. Situation sometimes pulls us to our knees. Yes, and when we go down on our knees, we call on the Lord. In other words, problems and difficulties become small in prayer. So when you pray, that it don't look like a big thing. Because guess what? In prayer, the Lord miniaturizes it. It makes it look just like it's just a little miniature thing. You know why? Because God is the equalizer. Amen. Mm -hmm. You see, we, we can't equalize things. Meaning that we can look, oh, somebody say you got cancer. And almost we fall out and faint. But when we call on the name of the Lord, cancer begins to get small in the eyesight of God. Why? Because God is a healer. And cancer means nothing to him. And then we begin to think about the Lord. Just don't know how I feel in my body. But the Lord said, Call on me. Because he said over there in Isaiah, but he will wound it. Y'all know the scripture, don't you? For our transgression, he will bruise for our iniquity. And the chastisement of our peace is upon him. But this is the part I really like. It says, By his stripes. We are healed. Not we may be healed, but we are healed. Hallelujah. The devil don't like it. The devil don't like it when we pray. Because when we're down on our knees, it's hard to stumble when you're on your knees. You're already down there, so how you going to stumble when you're on your knees? When you're calling on the name of the Lord. So when you're in a spiritual battle and I know some of us have been in a spiritual battle Hallelujah. I can only imagine what sister Janice have just went through yes. but in her battle with what she just went through I know she called on the name of the Lord Amen. I know in the midnight hour she said Lord help me I know in the middle of the day she said, Lord, have mercy. I know she said in the evening time, Lord, I can't make it without you. Guess what? The Lord came and visited her in the cool of the evening. Yeah. I like that song years ago. One of my favorite hymns. Brother John, uh, Evangelist Jones, this is why you need your hymn book. Because there's some hymns that just touches your heart. Yeah. One of my childhood hymns, I can remember all the way from when I was 12 years old. The year that I got baptized, they sang this song and said, I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the roses and the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God disclosed. This is the chorus to it. It said, and he walks with me. And he talks with me. And he tells me I am his own. How many know that it makes you feel good to know that Jesus is your own? And the, and the joy, this is the part I like, the joy we share as we tarry there for the closeness that when I call on the Lord he's there to rescue me I've had to be rescued from a lot of things I had to be rescued from danger I had to be rescued from trouble I had to be rescued from heartaches and pains I had to be rescued from broken heartedness I had to be rescued from being rejected I had to be rescued from being downtrodden but one day one day one day, the Lord lifted me and brought me out of trouble. Oh, bless his name. I'm trying to hurry along. I'm almost finished. But the last ingredient, the last ingredient that we need, after we done fasted, after we done prayed, we need to read our word daily. Because if we read our word, we'll know which direction to go in. This Bible is our map.